So polyrhythms, it seems like it's one of those things that all the cool kids on the internet are doing. And if you can play some polyrhythms and you're like automatically super gent or something. Some time ago, I brought you a video on polyrhythms and how to practice them, how they work. But today I'm gonna to be talking about polymeters. So first let's define the difference between a polyrhythm and a polymeter. So essentially a polyrhythm is whenever you have two different kinds of rhythms that line up on beat one. So for example, a three over four polyrhythm would be something like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have two different pulses going at the same time. Then you'd have something like a polymeter, which is something like three, eight over four, four, meaning we have eighth notes grouped in threes, which are the dotted coordinate rhythm, which would look something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the difference is that one of them lines up at a beat one of the measure and the other one doesn't. The other one repeats longer than it beat one. So for example, if you play a continuous stream of dotted quarter notes against quarter notes, like I just did, they won't line up a beat one, they'll take three bars to cycle around. Now to the internet, this is a very important thing because I've seen a lot of people argue about this and like a lot of people are very stern about it. But at the end of the day, they're all rhythms in my opinion. And also like daughter quarter notes over quarter notes, like three, eight over four, four, eventually lines up at the beat one and you can think of it as a big eight over 12 polyrhythm, whatever. Anyway, but today I'm gonna to be going into some simple polymeters and give you some ways to practice them and get better at them, thus improving your time feel. So over this whole video, I'm gonna use the first eight measures of all the things you want. I'm just gonna play the chords. If you're not familiar with the song, you got F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven, D flat major seven, then a G seven. Normally it's a two five here, I'm just gonna keep it as a five and then a C major seven for two bars. If you're unfamiliar with the seventh chords, you can feel free to kind of just play your triads or bar chords or whatever, but that's gonna be the structure of the song. And the way I'm gonna play it is I'm gonna use my pick to play the quarter note pulse and then these fingers to play the rhythm that we're gonna be playing. If you're not playing guitar, you can turn on a metronome and you can play it, or you can even just tap your foot on the quarter notes. How you're arranging this doesn't matter that much, but the important thing is to sort of feel the quarter note pulse against this sort of rhythm. And if you're playing piano, you can obviously do this. You can also do this on drums. So the two main things I'm gonna talk about are three, eight and five, eight over four four and one thing that's really interesting about that is that those things are essentially eighth notes grouped in threes or fives in the context of four four creating a certain kind of rhythm now if you expand that and instead of grouping eighth notes you group quarter notes you would now have three four or five four over four four now let's see what happens when you put three four over four four and by that i mean not using any kind of like triplet like polyrhythmic kind of thing but simply just like having one thing do three four and the other thing do four four so if we group the quarter notes in three we have one two three four one two three four one two three four so it's shifting over by one every time. You have hit on beat one, hit on beat four. It's kind of like shrinking every measure. So here's how it sounds. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So there's a three bar cycle total. You can also do the same thing with five, four, but instead it's gonna be expanding. So if we group quarter notes in five in the context of four, we have this kind of thing. One, two, three, four, 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 one. So that would be a five bar cycle. Notice the three, four thing is a three bar cycle. The five, four thing is a five bar cycle. Math. So now when we group eighth notes in three or fives, essentially we're doing exactly the same thing, but we're going to hit some way in the middle. So for example, when we're doing the threes, we're gonna go from beat one to beat four and then hit exactly in the middle. That's gonna be the end of two. That's exactly the midpoint between those beats. If we have a dotted half note, which is three beats, and we fill out with eighth notes, we get a total of six eighth notes, and so now we're just grouping them in threes and we get half. And then the cycle keeps going, so let's go into all of that. So the way that I recommend practicing that helped me a lot was doing it in little chunks. When I first started doing it, I tried to do it all at once and tried to like play the whole rhythm and the whole cycle continuously and I'd just keep falling on my face. And so I realized you can actually just go measure by measure and get each of the different rhythms down and then eventually just put it all together, which is also really good for subdividing eighth notes, for example. So throughout doing all of this, you get a lot of really cool rhythms. And if you're looking for like strumming patterns or something, like you found a bunch of them by just going through this exercise. So first what I'm gonna do is take the one bar phrase. So we're gonna hit on beat one, the end of two and on four. This rhythm is also that super popular rhythm rock rhythm, so you might already be comfortable with this rhythm. So I'm gonna take this one bar phrase and go through all the things you are, I'm gonna play through the chords with that. And I'm gonna play this with a straight eighth on this feel, so let's see how this goes. So that's the first one. And as a bonus, I added this sort of descending scalar line. My recommendation is to practice this exercise along with other things. In general, when I'm practicing, I like to kind of like add up a bunch of different things I'm working on so that I can kill two words with one stone. But anyway, now let's move on to the second bar. 
So first we had one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, and. So the first one we have the and of one beats three and the and of four. So that one's gonna go like this. One and two, three, four, and 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 So that one sounds pretty cool. Notice we hit the beat three because so far we've hit beat one, beat four, and then three. So the next bar we're gonna have to hit beat two. So the first one we have one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, and one. Two, three, and four. So we've beats two and the end of three. So let's play this next one. One, two, three, four. 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 And those are the three from the cycle. So now what I want to do is start combining them, but now I want to just do it in two bar phrases. So essentially I want to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So essentially we're just restarting the phrase after two bars. The reason why I feel like this is a really good thing is because when I started playing dotted quarter notes, I would just play them and I would play them with a the drummer and drummers kind of like already do these things, or at least they did them a lot earlier than I did, but I would be so confused and I'd get lost and I would lose my place. If you do it in one bar cycle, two bar cycle, three bar cycle, four bar cycle, eight bar cycle, 16 bar cycle, etc., then you have your place in the form and you know how to get in and out of these things. It also really helps you keep track of the form that's going on underneath this when you're playing that if you're in an improvisational context. So now I'm gonna do it in the three bar phrases and play the whole cycle, but I'm just gonna play eight bars. So I'm gonna cut off after the second bar of C major. So you have. Now let's move on to the four bar phrase. So with the four bar phrase, we cycle through the whole thing and then we have one extra bar of the beginning. So let's hear how that sounds. And so on, you can do eight bar phrases, 16 bar phrases, all this kind of stuff. You can also keep with the three bar phrases. And what I recommend doing is doing it over like a blues or something with a form divisible by three. Like all the things you are has a 36 bar form. So this actually works out well, but in a blues has 12 bars and 12 is divisible by three. And the reason why I recommend doing that is because when you hit the top of the form, you should have completed the cycle. So it kind of gives you like a checkpoint. Like if you're hitting beat one at the top of the form, then you made it. If not, then you messed up somewhere and you got to check out your spots. But anyway, so we have that. So then we have five, eight over four, four. Now with this one, since five is a number greater than four and it's an odd meter, a lot of great musicians suggest thinking of odd meters and groupings of two or three. So in other words, instead of one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, you can think of it as one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. You could also do like one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two but all these kind of combinations, but I recommend at least at first just sticking with just the twos and threes. So for this one, I'm gonna group in two of three. Now, if you group eight notes and two, we get a quarter note. If we group eight notes and three, we have a dotted quarter note. So it's kind of like the same thing we just played, but now we're inserting a quarter note there. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna do the two, three thing, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, and I'm gonna break it down into different bars. So the rhythm goes, daka, daka, da, daka, daka, da, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. If we put that now in the context of four, four, the first measure we have one, two, three, and four, and which is kind of cool because now we have this like down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up kind of feeling. This could be another alternate rhythm for like the Brazilian kind of bossa thing if you wanted to. But anyway, let's continue the pattern. So the first bar goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we have beats two, beats three, then we have the and of four. Notice we have the same thing again where the phrase starts on beat one and then now it starts on beat two, the same thing as a five, four thing we did earlier. So with that phrase, we actually don't get to complete five, four because normally we have two downs and one up. We only got one up. So naturally the next one is gonna start on the up. So we add it. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's the end of one, beats three and beat four. So then let's go to the fourth bar. We have one, two, Now 
we have sort of the opposite of the last one. We have one, two, three, four. So we have up, up, then down on beat four. Now, since the last one was a downbeat on beat four, the next one is gonna be the downbeat on beat one. It shifts over one. So now let's put it all together in this five bar phrase. cool cycle and then you can also do these kinds of things with polyrhythms with polyrhythms in nature are only one bar phrases however one thing you can do is take different polyrhythms that correspond to different meters and shove them into four four or whatever meter you're working in so for example what we could do is we do the three over five polyrhythm in four four and that will give you some over the bar line phrases so really quick let's check that out so essentially we get three over five polyrhythm by getting triplets in five four and grouping them into fives now if we apply the same things we were applying earlier into four four we'll still have the hits on beats one beat two beat three beat four and then beat five the, the same way that we had the shifting over quarter notes from before so the first bar looks like this so we have a hit on the first triplet then the third triplet would be two and then the second triplet would be four so we have one two three four then the next measure, if we kept going, we'd have one, two, three, four. Then we'd have one, two, three, four. And then we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So then to put it all together, we have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. If we do into two bar phrases, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. 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 And so on. You can do all different kinds of things. You can do all the previous exercises with that. And if that last thing didn't make so much sense to you, or you want to check out more about polyrhythms, I made this video a while ago on polyrhythms, it might be worth it to check that out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, thank you so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.